Hello class and welcome to unit one, video five. Today we're gonna go ahead and look at percents and graphs. Um, our learning targets for today are that you should be able to find percents and percent change. Um, also, we're gonna look at some graphs and you should be able to create and analyze bar graphs and circle graphs. Um, Remind you, just a reminder to you that learning targets are what you should be able to do once you're done with the notes and with the practice worksheet. So if you have any questions afterwards or during while you're working on those things, please make sure you pause the video, write them down, come and ask me those questions. Otherwise, let's go ahead and look at percents. So in order to find a percent given a fraction, what you need to do is take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. Okay, and just to remember if you have a fraction, you have a number over a number. The numerator is what is in the top, and the denominator is what is in the bottom. Once you have taken and divisin, divided the numerator by the denominator, in order to make it a percent, you just need to move the decimal two places to the right. Okay, and that will give you your percent. So let's go ahead and look at an example. If you received a 21 out of 24 in your last quiz, what percent of the questions did you answer correctly? Well, on your calculator, if you take 21 divided by 24, you will get 0.875. Okay, well, this is the answer as a decimal, but we would like it as a percent. So in order to move it as a percent, you'd move it over two, and so really it's 87.5%. That would have been your quiz score, 87.5%. Okay, well now what if you would like to find a percent and you're given a decimal? Well, we just did that. You're gonna move the decimal two places to the right. Okay, um, and then the other option that you could do is multiply the decimal by 100 to change it to a percent. So these two things are, they will do the same thing. Multiplying by 100 is the same as moving two decimals to the right or vice versa. So this is option one and this is option two. Okay, they're just two different options on how to make something into a percent. So we want to express 0 0.0235 as a percent. Well, if you type this in on your calculator and multiply it by 100, you're going to get that. You're going to get 2.35, and that would be a percent. Or if you move it over two to the right, your decimal will be here, so it's 2.35%. So we're going to be looking at some word problems, um, and one thing to know is that if it says is, and then the number, it's the percent of is out of 100, okay? Or another way to think about it is 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 the part, and of is the whole, or the total. So is is a part, because part of 100, and then the of is the whole, so you want to know the whole out of 100. So... This first example says, what percent is 45 of 78? Okay, in this case, I would put the is is 45 is equal to, sorry, is 45 of 78. So 78 goes to the bottom. So there's two ways you could solve this. You could take this right now, divide it on your calculator, and you would get point five seven six nine two and you would move the decimal over two and it would be your percent so if I do that I would have fifty seven point six nine two percent the other way that you could set this up is as a proportion so I would still have forty five over seventy eight is equal to we don't know what percent over a hundred if you wanted to do it this way you would then cross multiply so you have seventy eight x is equal to 4,500 when you multiply those two numbers, and then you would divide both sides by 78, and you will get the same answer. x is point, um, sorry, x is 57.692%. Okay, so either way you can set it up. The next one is um, what percent of 45 is 115. Well, is is the part. So actually 115 goes up here over 45. And if I go ahead and divide that on my calculator, I will get 2.556. And if I want to move it and put it as a percent, I would move the decimal two to the right. 
So it's 255.6%. Well, does that make sense? Does this, so this is 255. Well, 200 would mean it's two times bigger. So it's 45 times two, that's 90. So yeah, it's at least two times bigger plus some more. So yeah, it does make sense. All right. So the last one, if you notice, is a little different. This one has the percent. So you are going to have to set it up as a proportion. Okay, so this one, 12 is 15% of what number? So 12 is, so it's 12 over, we don't know, equals 15%. So that goes up here, 15 over 100. I would cross multiply. This would give me 15x is equal to 12 times 100 is 1,200. Divide both sides by 15 and x is equal to 80. So my of is 80. Okay. So those are some practice problems. Now we're going to get into percent change. Increase or decrease? Oop. If you notice up here, it should say decrease, not decrease. Um, so just ignore that. So in order to find it, you're going to find the difference in the amounts. I always take the bigger number and I minus the smaller number. It doesn't matter um, as long as you can tell me if it's an increase or decrease, but you don't need to have a negative with it. So always I do bigger minus smaller, and then you divide with the original amount, the amount that you started with. So let's look at an example. Uh, the number of students at Franklin High School increased from 840 to 910 over a five-year period. What was the percent increase? Okay, well, I always take the bigger minor number minus the smallest. So 910 minus 840 over, now it's the original amount. Well, what are they talking about? What did I start with? I had 840 first, so that's my original. 910 minus 840 is 70 over 840, and if I divide it on my calculator, I get 0 .083 repeating. The 3 is repeating. So I would move my decimal over 2 to get 8.3 repeating percent, and then this is a percent increase. So label it as an increase. We're going up by 8.3%. Okay. A TV was originally $400, but now it is $345. What is the percent decrease in the TV? So bigger minus smaller over what I started with, what was originally a $400 TV. Okay, 400 minus 345 is 55. So I have 55 over 400. If I do that on my calculator, I get 0.1375. To figure out the percent, move it to. So I have 13.75%. And if I'm going from 400 to 345, it's a 13.75% decrease. Okay, so there is my answer for example two. Example three. must have missed it. Um, let's just go ahead and write it. So example three, it says find the total price of each item. We have an umbrella that cost $14. And they're saying that you got it at a discount of 20%. And the tax was, tax was 6%. Okay, so what we need to do is figure out how much this was. Well, the first thing to do is, well, if I'm discounted 20%, how much did I really have to pay for? Well, I don't have to pay for 20%. So 100% minus 20% means I paid for 80% of my umbrella. Okay, so if I paid for 80%, I'm going to take 14. 80% as a decimal is 0.8. So 14 times 0.8. That tells me that I paid, if I do that on my calculator, $11.20 for my umbrella. But we all know we have to pay good old tax, so I have to pay for the tax. There's two ways you can do this. If you take 11.20 times the tax, move this decimal, this one's actually 0 0.06, okay, 0 0.06. This is gonna tell me how much tax I had. So 11.20 times 0 0.06 on our calculators will tell us that it is 0.672. Okay, well, 
This is talking about money, so I would round to do two decimal places, and if you don't, I will take off a half a point um, on your assessment. So make sure you're rounding to two for money. That means I paid 67 cents in tax. So I would take my 11.20 plus 67 cents to say my total cost for my umbrella was $11.87. Okay. One other way, which might save you the adding, is you could do the tax another way. You for sure had to pay $11.20 for your umbrella after discount. Well, the tax is, to you're going to pay the .06, but I'm also going to pay the $11.20. And to pay for the $11.20, it's really 1. Because 1 times $11.20 is $11.20, and then it tax on that 6% sales tax. So if I on my calculator I take 11.2 times 1.06, it will give me my $11.87. So either way is fine, um, whichever way you prefer to do it. Okay, let's go ahead and look at problem B. I actually think you could pause the video um, right now and do problem B, and I recommend that you do. So please pause the video and do problem B. Okay, hope you pause the video and you did this problem. So this time we're looking at a dress, has a discount of 30%, and it has a tax of 6.5%. So let's do what we did last time. First, the discount is we're getting 70%, so it means I'm really paying for 70%. Okay, so let's figure out how much of my dress I really have to pay for. I'm gonna take my $70 dress times, 70% is 0.7 times 0.7, tells me that my discounted dress is on sale for $49. But then I have to pay tax for it. So I would take 49 times the tax. So if I move this one, 1, 2, I can write the tax as 0 0.065. Okay, but I have to pay for the 49, so it's 1.065. And if I type that into my calculator, I will get that it will cost me $52.19. Okay. So that is my portion on the video for percents. Okay. If you would like, you could pause the video here um, and take a break, and then you can come back and we're going to take care of bar graphs and circle graphs. Um, or if you have any questions on percents, please be sure to write them down. So moving on to bar graphs. We have a sports magazine. It took a survey among its readers on their favorite sports and recorded the data. It says draw a bar graph to represent the data and answer the questions below. Okay, so let's draw our bar graph first. The first one is volleyball. Okay, so bar graph means it just has bars. Um, so volleyball, 1,200 people. So what I would do is find 1,200 people for volleyball, mark it, and draw my bar. If I had a ruler on my computer screen, I could do this, but nice and straight. But hopefully you guys can do better than I can on your paper. So it's volleyball. Now we're moving on to baseball. It's 900. Okay, well, there's not a 900, but there's an 800 and a 1,000. So in between, I'm going to make my mark for 900. So there's baseball. Then soccer is 1,500. So once again, I'm going to mark it in between 1,400 and 1,600. Football is 1,800. So that one's kind of up there. Marking it on my chart, drawing nice bars. Notice the bars are not touching each other. Um, in a bar graph, they are not. And lastly, I have to do basketball. 600 for basketball. All right, so there is my bar graph um, for the sports. Okay, let's go ahead and answer the questions. So I have my bar graph off to the side. It says, which sport is least popular? So if you look at it, you can clearly see um, that the one that has the shortest bar is basketball. And so that means it's the least popular. Okay, now it's the opposite, which is the most popular. So I'm looking for the tallest bar, which is football. Number three says to have a same no to have a same number of votes for soccer and football. How many more votes will soccer require? Well, they're saying I want soccer to be the same as football. Well, right now football is 1,800, and soccer is 1,500. Well, I'm just going to take 1,800 minus 1,500 to see how many more votes I would need. This would be 300, so I need 300 more votes 
to make soccer and football the same. And for four, if 200 more readers vote for soccer, would it be the new topper on the chart? Well, we said for it to tie football, there needed to be 300, but if I get 200, is that going to be enough? No, it would still be short how many votes? 100 more votes. So it will still be 100 votes short. of football. Okay, so those are bar graphs. Just a little refresher on those. The next thing we're going to go ahead and look at um, are circle graphs. So we're going to use the same data, but now we're going to create a circle graph. Okay, what we need to do is figure out, well, what percent um, is each category. So I would first figure out, well, how many total votes were there? So if I take 1,200 plus 900 plus 1,500 plus 1,800 plus 600, I would get my total votes. So my total votes, if I add those together, is 6,000. Okay, so in my circle graph, I have percents. So for volleyball, I would take 1,200 divided by 6,000 to figure out what percent volleyball is. Well, that's a 20%. Okay. The next one I would do is baseball. Baseball is 900 votes out of the 6,000 people. 900 divided by 6,000 is going to give me 15%. Uh, and remember on my calculator, it's giving me really a 0.15. And if I move it over, I get 15%. Um, soccer. To figure out soccer, I'm going to take 1,500 divided by 6,000. And if I do that on my calculator, I would get 0.25 or 25%. Football, remember that's my biggest category, so I have 1,800 divided by 6,000. If I do that one on my calculator, I would get 0.3, which is 30%. And lastly, basketball, if I go ahead, it's 600 over 6,000. Thousand, I would say that this one is 10%. Okay, so I need to know these percents in order to put them into my circle graph. Okay, my circle graph, it always stems from the center, so I'm just going to make a tentative mark of my center, center. And I would maybe start with one of these percents that I feel would be easy to graph. Well, how many percent, what percent should they all add up to? They should all add up to 100%. Well, an easy way to think about it is if I break it in half, I have 50% and 50%. And if I broke it into fours, I would have 25%. Or any of them 25%. Well, soccer is. So I'm going to go ahead and make so do soccer right away. Whoop. Hopefully you have a straight edge or something to make your lines a little straighter. So soccer is 25%. So I want to have one-fourth of my circle graph. So soccer, and I'm going to label it, and it says 25%. So check, soccer is done. All right, then I would move on. Um, I would say that the next one, maybe just go in order now, I have football is 30%. Going to be a little bit bigger than 25, so I know I'm going to be using over half. So maybe I will just, you know, it's kind of an eyeball. It's not perfect, um, but a little bit bigger than 25, so here is football at 30%. Check, that one is done. Then let's go ahead, um, let's do basketball, that one's 10%. So if you kind of eyeball it, so we have 30% here, so if I broke it into threes, I would have a 10%. So this little sliver here will be basketball. And I label it 10%. All right, and then I have a 20% and a 15%. So 20% is a little less than 25, so I'm going to kind of base it off of the 25 and go a little less. So here's 25, so maybe like here's 20. So that's for volleyball, and that one is 20%. And then we have to label our last one, that is baseball. And baseball is 
percent. So there's my circle graph. Okay. Hopefully if you have a straight edge you use it, um, but then you can kind of look at it. Does it look right? This is 30, it's bigger than the 25, the 25 is bigger than the 20, and the 20 is bigger than the 15, and 15 is bigger than 10. So yeah, overall it looks right. Okay, let's go ahead and answer our questions. Okay, what percent of the voters polled chose baseball as their favorite sport? Well, I can just easily go back to my circle graph and I look at baseball. What percent? 15 percent. So a circle graph is nice because it shows me uh, the percents. So this is 15 percent. All right, if this poll is indicative of how the 2,000 people of Farmington would actually vote, what is the best estimate of the number of votes volleyball would receive? Well, currently, volleyball is what percent? Volleyball is 20%. So 20% of the population would vote for volleyball. This is what they're saying. So I would take 20,000 people times 20%. So as a decimal, that's 0.2. So what's 20% of 20,000? That's 4,000. So it would receive 4,000 votes. Okay. And one last question. If you were to draw an accurate circle graph using a protractor, um, what would the central angle of the sector measure for each sport be in degrees? So biggest thing to remember, remember protractor? It's that little semicircle that you measure angles with, and they are marked like 90 degrees, 180 degrees. Okay, if you were going to use one of those and make your circle graph absolutely perfect, we would want to know what degree each sector should be. So just so you're clear what a sector is, a sector is one of these pieces of pie. Okay, so what we're going to do is use the percents. So let's just start out with volleyball and go in order. Volleyball is 20%. Okay, well, if I want to know how many degrees that would be, I would say how many degrees are in a circle. There's 360 degrees. So for volleyball, it'd be 20% of 360 degrees. So I'm just going to say, so volleyball, it's 20%. So I want to know, well, 360 degrees times 0.2. Well, 360 times 0.2 is going to give you 72. So it would be 72 degrees. Moving on to baseball. If you look at your circle graph from above, you should have yours on your page. It's 15%. So I would take 360 degrees times my 15%, so 0.15 as a decimal. And if I do that, I get 54 degrees. Soccer. I take my 360 degrees times the percent, um, and soccer is 25%, so 0.25, which gives me 90 degrees. Does that make sense? I had a circle, and 25% was a fourth of it, so yeah, that should have been a 90 degree angle, so that makes perfect sense. The next one is football. Football is 30%, so I'm going to take 360 degrees times 0.3. And if I do that, I get 108 degrees. That's for football. And lastly, basketball. What degree would that need to be measured at? Well, 360 degrees times basketball was only 10%, so 0.1. And so that gives me 36 degrees. And if you wanted to check to make sure you didn't make any mistakes, take 72 plus 54 plus 90 plus 108 plus 36, and it should all equal a total of 360 degrees, and it does. So that is it for our notes today. If you have any questions, um, please make sure to write them down, come and ask me. Um, otherwise, you can go ahead and do the Unit 1 uh, Notes 5 practice. Uh, have a good day. Talk to you later.